Hey there, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. My name is Erin and I'm so happy to have you here today for this video, which is all about five indie patterns that I love but won't be buying. So if that's interesting to you, stay tuned because we are going to go through these and talk about what I love about them, why I will not be hitting add to cart on any of them. So let's just get started. A lot of these are representative, we'll say. Um, I did a video recently about my five commercial patterns that I love but won't be buying. And last one was a caftan um, because I'm just not in my caftan era. If you're interested in what I mean by that, uh, I will go ahead and link that video so you can watch it after this one. So yeah, most of these are representative, but they are patterns that I love. And if I needed this type of item, or if I had a reason to need this type of item, I would 100% be buying it so that I could make this option. We're going to go ahead and get started with the Marlo sweater by True Bias. I love this sweater, especially the kind of cropped version, the boxy look, the really thick band and the big buttons they have on it. Like, Oh my god, I wish that I thought I would look good in this sweater. I just, chunky sweaters make me feel chunky. Um, I have kind of broad shoulders and bigger biceps proportionately, which is why I like to hide them and things like this. It's my problem area. Um, and I really feel like chunky sweaters and stuff, they just make me feel like it's highlighting that kind of problem area. Uh, on me. So if if I kind of get over that and become more comfortable with my problem areas, anyway, um, I will 100% be buying the Marlowe sweater and making it. They do have it. Um, you can make a longer version of it, which is also really cute, but it's still like boxy, oversized, oh, not necessarily oversized. Yeah, oversized. It's still a little boxy. Um, I don't think it wouldn't be flattering on me. I think it would look good on me. It's a great sweater. I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel great in it as with most chunky oversized sweater situations. So unfortunately that's why I will not be buying the Marlowe sweater. The next pattern is also representative, but it's one that I love. The Zadie jumpsuit by Paper Theory. It is representative for all jumpsuits and rompers. I think I might have some I know I have at least one jumpsuit pattern already that I may or may not ever make. It's the bathroom thing. It's the bathroom thing for me. It's a whole taking things down, being half naked, taking time to pull it back up. It's, it's not there for me. I like to be well hydrated and I have a toddler. And those are two things that are not conducive to extra time in the bathroom. So, or extra, extra trips taking a long time in the bathroom. That's why I'm not going to be buying this, but I really, really like it. I love the legs. That's what drew me to it initially. I like that it was a wrap top style. I think that is flattering. Um, and specifically, I think when I first saw this, I was nursing like a million times a day because my daughter was young. So I really liked that it would have good uh, nursing access if needed. But what I loved was the bottom half. Um, the, the pants part of it is... Uh, really nice, really flattering, I think. So that's what drew me to it. But unfortunately, it's the bathroom thing for me. So next, we have the Donnie shirt from the Friday Pattern Company. Everyone has made this shirt and they all look so good and I love it. But once it, like, it's just not my vibe. I'm not 100% sure what my style is. Um, I alluded to that in the last video. I'm kind of figuring that out. But I don't I don't think it's this shirt as much as I like it. Something about collared shirts always feels formal to me, even if they're an informal shirt done in an informal fabric. Like you can make it as informal as you want, but I see a collar and my brain is just like, I need to tuck that into trousers. I don't know why. There's no reason for that, but it's where my brain goes. So um, I... If I can rewire my brain to not think that, I will 100% be purchasing this because I do really like it. For now, if I want something similar, which I do have a flamingo themed shirt from this pattern, I have New Look 6197. Obviously, I'm not, I'm not saying it's like a dupe for the Donnie at all. Um, but if I want that, you know, flat collar without a stand type of 
thing. I, I can dip my feet into trying that as an everyday look with this pattern, but I just, I just don't see it on me. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like picturing outfits and I see it on other people and I love Donnie shirts on other people, but I just, I don't think it's me. Maybe that's it. That's just it. It's just not really me, at least not right now. The next pattern are the Miriam trousers from Cashmere and oh my gosh, these are, I wish I, I want to go apply for a job in an office so I can make these. I'm not actually going to do that, but they're, they're great, great work trousers. Um, the, like I said, I'm going to include pictures, um, the welt pockets, the, um, uh, where is it? Slash, po yeah, slash pockets. And then the welt pockets in the back, hidden zip fly, um, all of that is just, they're really, really sharp looking trousers. That's all I have to say about it. They look really good, but I don't have anywhere to wear them. I do have, my mom gave me this. So if I do find a time and place to have like office style workwear trousers, I do have Simplicity 2860. My mom bought it and some fabric before she retired. Um, and never ended up making them. So she gave it to me and this does have like amazing fit and stuff. So, but they don't have the well pockets in the back. So I, I like the Miriam ones. I, I'd make these first, I guess. Um, but I really like these Miriam trousers. I don't know what else to say about them, except they just are sharp looking. They're very professional. They are very nice. You could make them in some cool colors to coordinate with really nice blouses. Like, um, the Rhapsody, things like that. But yeah, big, big fan. And is the Ormond Designer Coat by Style Arc and Hot Diggity Dog. This is a great coat. I think it is chic. It is my definition of chic. It's fully lined. It's a wrap front coat. It has raglan sleeves. The the one that they have on the website, they have this hot pink and the, like the, the the belt for the wrapping and tying it's wide. Uh, it's really wide. So it's like a statement. Um, I like that it's a wrap. I like, I just, I can, I can picture myself like pulling it off the hook and just shoo, shoo, tying it up like that. Just instead of fussing with a bunch of buttons. I just love this. Once again, I just don't have anywhere to wear it. I live in the South. It gets a little bit cold. I'm, I'm new to Mississippi, but I lived in the South for years. Um, generally, if this follows the same rules as Pensacola, it gets a little chilly for a little bit and I have other coats I can wear. I don't need this one. This is also way more chic than anything I need, especially I would want to make, I believe it's two lengths. Yeah, they have two lengths. I would want to make the long one. I would want to go like full, full send on this beautiful coat. Um, I just don't have, I don't live in a place where I need to wear it. I don't have a wardrobe that calls for it. I have literally no reason to make this coat at this point in my life. But if I move up north, you bet your bottom dollar buying that bad boy. So those are the five indie patterns that I love, but will not be buying. Um, some of them very specific items, some of them representative of a whole category of clothing that I just don't see for myself right now. But um, they're all beautiful. I want to make them. Uh, let me know in the comments if there are any patterns that you absolutely love and think are gorgeous, but aren't going to buy for some reason. Um, I did try and kind of vary my reasons, not just, I know a couple of them were like, I have no reason to buy this. I don't need to wear this, but I tried to vary the reasons so it wasn't just the same thing over and over again. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I also made one for commercial patterns that I will link. I probably linked it earlier. I'll link it again if I can, um, because those, those were different reasons also. Some of them are like, I don't have a reason to have this, but um, I tried to use some different reasons and mix it up. So it's a little more interesting than saying the same thing over and over again. This was, this was a difficult list to come up with because I looked at the patterns that I have on my pattern list and was like, I know I don't, I love that. I'm not going to buy it, but I really want to buy it. So should I say I'm not going to buy it? Cause then I that does it for today. Like I said, let me know in the comments if you have any patterns you love but won't buy for some reason or won't be buying for some reason. 
and um, like this video, hit the, I mean, hit the like button if you liked it. And if you are not subscribed, I really hope you consider subscribing and sticking around for more videos. Um, I do a Friday sews pretty much every week. And then I have some other fun little videos like this planned for the near future. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.